All right, we're going to do a expository study here. Uh, nothing real super in-depth, but uh, just going to take some time here to go through the longest chapter, not technically a chapter, it's a psalm, but the longest uh, psalm, if you will, in your entire King James Bible. And ironically, this psalm is not about salvation, uh, not about how to get people saved or whatever. It's about the Word of God. Uh, the single most important thing that we have on earth is authority. Who has the final say-so? Thus saith the Lord. That's who. I mean, if you break it down into really what is what has mankind struggled with since the very beginning of time, it's authority. That's why wars are fought. And that's why certain governments are overthrown, new ones set up. That's why people have so many different denominations and churches and religious organizations and things. It's all about authority. Who has the authority to tell people what to do? And anybody can, you know, admit to that. You can be an, an atheistic evolutionist and admit to the fact that, yes, authority is the thing that people struggle with the most. Who has the final say so? Well, I'm a Bible believing Christian, and I know that my authority comes from this book. I could form some kind of a cult. I could become very charismatic and put on a show and go get some huge, big, multi-million dollar building and, and fill it with a bunch of people that would worship me. Uh, but I'm not about to do that. I fear God too much to do something like that. That's not going to happen. I point people to the book. Why? This is the final authority. And so it's interesting that the greatest chapter, the biggest chapter, if you will, we'll call it a chapter for the sake of this, argument here. The biggest chapter in the Bible is actually on the authority of Scripture. Pretty interesting. And I mentioned the thing about salvation. Salvation is important, but a lot of the brethren out there are just win souls, win souls, win souls, win souls. Well, winning souls is important, but how can you win souls if you have no final authority? You know, and you get the, the new version crowd, the Alexandrian crowd, you know, James White's kind of the, the head of the, you know, idiots union out there. And and they're coming out and they're, you know, destroying people's beliefs and the authority of the King James Bible. You say, what? It, okay, what is the final authority then? Well, the original autographs that don't exist. Woo, yeah. <laughs> That's smart. You know, we don't, we believe in something that never existed. You know, I mean, the original autographs as a single volume never existed. You know, the originals of Genesis were gone by the time the originals of Matthew were written. So, quite the winners there, but what we're going to do today is we're going to go through Psalm 119, verse by verse. We're going to read it. Get your King James Bible out. Don't sit there and just look at me the whole time or whatever else. Get your King James Bible out and follow along. It's going to do you good to read along with this thing. Okay? I'm going to try to read slower. I sometimes read very fast. I'll try to read slower. Let's read it together and uh, see what if the Holy Spirit bears witness here. Because I know a lot of times I'll think of things and stuff and people go, that's exactly what I thought of it. It's, it's a neat experience. When you have the body of Christ where all the Holy Spirit of truth comes and he leads us in or guides us into all truth. You know, you'll see that thing. And, you know, some of you put stuff down in the comments and I go, wow, yeah, I didn't see that at first. Yeah, but you're right. You know, or I'll think, ah, I should have said such and such in, in the sermon and I forgot. And, and then I see it in the comments. Somebody says, hey, why didn't you say this? You know, it's, it's really neat. To have that fellowship of the Spirit. You know, someday maybe we'll do this thing live or whatever else. You know, I can get that set up eventually. I don't know. We'll see. Plans for the future. But uh, let's start out here. Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Okay. Uh, goes back. Let me just stop there for a minute. If you want to go back to Psalm 1, to the very beginning... Kind of reminds me of this, this passage here. Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yeah. Get your counsel and your ideas and your beliefs and your feelings about things from the book. This is a filter. 
and you filter anything that you hear, anything that you see, it goes through the book. Okay? That's a very important thing to remember. And you're going to see this thing about the law and God's ways and His commandments and, and His Word all throughout this entire psalm. But let's keep reading here. Verse 2. Blessed are they that keep His testimonies and that seek Him with the whole heart. Any verses come to mind there? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Sure. We're supposed to hide God's word in our heart. And as I've talked about, you know, uh, I think the Lord talked about it. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You put more of this, the more of this that you can put into your heart, the more of it you relate to and you say, yeah, you know, it isn't just a, see, it's not a, just a mental memorization of it. No, it's actually feeling it in your heart saying, that really rings true to me. Yeah, I've experienced that in life. See, and you hide that in your heart, the more it's going to be easier for you to witness to people. That's how you have courage in witnessing. Verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Do you walk the walk? Or do you just talk the talk? <laughs> Verse 4, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Are you keeping his commandments? Or his precepts, his things that he's written in here? Do you keep them diligently? I hope so. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. That should be your desire. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. You shouldn't say, well, you know, some parts of the Bible are okay or whatever. No, our desire should be continually trying to strive for perfection, sanctification. We should always be trying to learn more Scripture, trying to witness to people more, trying to live more according to this book. Verse 6, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. You're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ someday, Christian. And if you're lost out there and you don't get saved, you will be standing at the judgment or the uh, great white throne judgment. Excuse me. You're going to stand, you're going to be judged someday. So make sure that you keep, you know, if you're not saved, I mean, you're going to have a problem with it, but if you're saved, you need to keep these commandments. You know, the commandments of God, keep His Word in your heart. Hide it in your heart. And then you won't be ashamed someday when you stand before Him at judgment. Verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Notice that one. Praise comes from understanding God's righteous judgments. How about that one? Verse 8, I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Yeah. Verse 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Very important verse for not only young men, but also young women. You can cleanse your way, you can clean up your life by taking heed to the book. What does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about that? Keep this book a central part of your life and you will have less problems with sin. Verse 10, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Again, seeking the Lord, wanting that relationship with Him. Verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Yeah, talked about that. Okay, the way that you keep away from sin, the way that you cleanse your way is to hide God's word in your heart. Memorize it. I mean, sometime when you're lusting, try singing some hymns or try reading the Bible and see how easy it is. You're going to feel that war between the flesh and the spirit. You're going to feel kind of button heads there. It's not going to work too good. Your flesh is going to be like, no, don't, no, don't do that. Don't read that. Don't, don't sing that hymn. No, 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 no. You're feeling sick or you're, you're whatever else. You're having some lust issues or whatever. Just stay away from the book. Stay away from the book. You know, you'll feel that. Verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Again, God is your teacher. That's ultimately where you need to get to. You know, men can teach you. That's fine. If you're a woman, if you're a lady... Other ladies can teach you. Fine, no, no problem. But it always has to come back to the Lord, that personal relationship. Verse 13. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Again, 
He see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Important. Verse 14. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. You know you're wealthy if you have this book. Very wealthy. I mean, back uh, in the 1300s with John Wycliffe, I remember reading one time that they would give up a whole month's salary just for you know a, a book of the Bible because it was all handwritten back in those days. They didn't have the printing press back then. Very interesting. And yet we can carry around whole King James Bible like this. I got a whole bunch of them over there. I got my, you know, one I show on video a lot here. And King James Bibles all over the place, you know, here. We're very rich. Verse 15, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Meditate in thy statutes. That means you think about them. Doesn't mean you're sitting cross-legged with your fingers like doing some kind of occult thing or something. No, 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 no. Meditate means you're thinking about it continually. Thinking about his statutes. I will not forget thy word. Verse 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Very important. Verse 18. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Don't worry about some of these people that give you a hard time, the atheists, the Catholics, the whatever, easy believers and people. Um, and Lordship Salvation is still, you know, watch out for both groups. You know, don't worry about some of those prideful people. The Lord's going to rebuke him in his timing. Verse 22. Remove from me a reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. It doesn't matter who speaks against you. Yeah, you know, who speaks against you. <laughs> you have the book. You have God's word. What's it matter what people think about you? Keep that in mind. Verse 24, Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Yep. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou teachest, or thou heardest me, teach me thy statutes. You know, and I'll say this about verse 25 there. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. Uh, your soul is, is basically... See, back in the Old Testament, their soul and their flesh were joined. In the New Testament, you know, there's the uncircumcision, uh, or the uh, circumcision made without hands uh, that cuts your soul and your flesh loose. That's why if you touch something, you're not going to die because of that. They're separate. In the Old Testament, they weren't. But uh, in a sense, you are still trapped in a body that is prone to sin. That's why it says, quicken thou me according to thy word. Um, you're alive, you're, you're, you're going to live a much better life if you have this book, if you keep it and think about it. Go down to verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Hmm. My soul melteth for heaviness, strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Is your soul melting for heaviness? <laughs> we would call that depression. Very, very sorrow, very sad. You know how you get strength? Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Whatever you're going through here in this life, you are headed for eternity. You know, rapture, judgment seat of Christ, mar marriage supper of the Lamb, while the earth is going through God's wrath, you know, for seven years. Then you come back down with Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning for a thousand years, and then it's eternity. Think about those things. Okay. Verse 29. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Have you chosen the way of truth? Well, you know, some truth. I mean, you know, there's some truth that I have to reject simply because it makes me unpopular. But, uh, you know, some truth, it's, as long as it's not too offensive, I'll accept it. That's the way a lot of people live. Uh, I suggest you choose the way of truth, no matter how hard it is to accept sometimes. 
God will bless you for it. I've seen it in my own life. Verse 31. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. You're going to live for truth. You're going to say, I understand what God says about this. I'm going to keep it for the rest of my life. Sure. Verse 34. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Uh, there's a number of scriptures. We're not going to go over them, but understanding comes from God. Excuse me. Yawn in there. Verse 35. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Yeah. You know, again, when God commands you to not do things in, in the scriptures, when he says, drunkenness, don't, don't mess with drunkenness, don't put any wicked thing before your eyes, abstain from appearance of evil, and, you know, uh, don't be, don't sleep too much, don't eat too much, don't eat too little, don't sleep too little, you know, all those things. God's commandments there are, you know, that's something that you should delight in. When you follow this book, it's going to make your life better. It's not going to make your life more miserable. God's not going to take anything good away from you. All right? Important to remember that. Verse 36. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. No. <laughs> That's interesting too. You know, you're not going to covet a whole lot if you're reading this book. But, you know, you have some free time, and instead of picking up the book, you go pick up a catalog. Hmm. Start having some coveting issues. Verse 37. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in the, thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 39. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. What greater mercy do we have than through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross? And you know, if you're Jewish and you're reading this, what mercy from God do you have? Just to hope that one day you might be resurrected. Maybe. If somebody's praying for you to get out of there or whatever else. Interesting. Verse 42. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. For I trust in thy word. Oh, there's a good one. That's another one you might want to highlight there. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. For I trust in thy word. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Well, the Bible says, Oh, you and your old Bible, you are tied to that Bible. You judge everything by that Bible. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. That's all you need. Well, I got to study some other things and stuff like this. It's so funny. You watch like a James White or whatever, and he's like, you know, you need to, you need to study all these other things outside of the Bible to answer the lost, you know, debate them and... and intellectually corner them and stuff like this. No, you don't. If they reject the book, they're rejecting the Lord. Your job's done. You don't need all these intellectual things and stuff like that. I mean, I do some of it because I'm in ministry, but I always go back to the book. The book's my final authority. That's all you need, brethren. Study this book. Verse 43. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, uh, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. Boy, what a prayer there. That would be important. It's kind of funny because Paul fulfilled that. King Agrippa. Paul's actually, you know, King Agrippa, you know. <laughs> you know about these things, you know. And King Agrippa, what was his answer? Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Paul wasn't ashamed. Paul didn't hold back. He wasn't politically correct. Neither should any Christian be politically correct. Verse 47, And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up 
unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Excuse me. Verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Over in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, I believe it is, it talks about, you know, when you're dead in trespasses and sins, you get saved, you become quickened by the Holy Spirit of truth. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you have a remote control that doesn't have any batteries in it. Like that, it's dead. It can't make anything happen. But then you get the Holy Spirit that comes in and quickens it. It makes it alive. And then it starts to work. That's kind of the picture of a lost person. They're, they're like a remote control without batteries. And the Holy Spirit comes in and all of a sudden the Bible starts to make sense. All right, verse 51. The proud have had me greatly in derision. Yeah, <laughs> yet have I not declined from thy law. Uh, you're going to get that as a Christian. I mean, if you haven't seen some of the stuff that's said about me in the comments and other people making videos against me and whatever else, uh, those people are proud and they will deride me. They have had me greatly in derision. But uh, I've not declined from the law of the Lord. I'm going to stick by the book. And you need, you need to do the same thing. Verse 52. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. You know, there's some really horrible things right now out there. Why? Because of the wicked that forsake the law of the Lord. There's some very, very evil people, and they are in control of some very, very powerful weapons and very terrible things. And it's... You know, when you think about it, it'll bring some horror to you. But, you know, fear God, not man. Verse 54. You have to keep those things in mind, what I'm saying. Verse 54. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Sure. Are you a law-abiding Christian? I hope so. I don't mean constitutional law or the laws of the land. I mean the laws of this book. God's laws. Alright. Because the just laws that are in this book will line up with good laws in, a, in any nation. If you have crooked laws in a nation, then you know they're not going to line up with this book. And you follow the book, not the crooked laws. Verse 57. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. Do you keep the words of God or are you seeking to uh, update them? I hope, I hope not. Verse 58. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Sure, that's what you want. You want God's mercy in your life. Um... The Bible talks about how the God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. That you're to humble yourself. You know, it's important. Verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. Yep. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Did you ever lay awake at night or wake up in the middle of the night? You're going, what in the world? I can't sleep. Well, use it to pray. Use that time to pray and to thank the Lord, to praise Him. Verse 63, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. You'll see that. It's an, it's an encouraging thing to see other Bible-believing Christians out there. That's why... Some of you sit about the thing I asked a question, should I keep the comment section or open or close it? And a lot of you were like, keep it open. I, you know, I need to see other Christians out there so I don't feel like I'm the only you know, one or something. Well, yeah. You're a companion of all them that fear the Lord and of them that keep His precepts. Verse 64. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Changed life. 
Hmm. Before I was afflicted, and I went, or before I was afflicted, I went astray. Mm -hmm. But now have I kept thy word. Things will change after you get saved. Verse 68. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. What do we read in the Pauline epistles? He says about by good report and false report. You know, there are people that, or evil report, I think it might be. There are people that will lie about you as a Christian. That's going to happen. Um, and here you have uh, it written about back in the Old Testament. The proud have forged a lie against me. Yeah, it's going to happen. So if it happens to you, you're in good company. Verse 70. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. A fatty heart is somebody who's very unhealthy and you know, leads to a heart attack. Uh, verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Boy, get a hold of that one, too. Another one that's very important. I mean, if, if all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night sometime and your house is on fire, are you going to reach for this book? Or are you going to reach for your uh, valuables first? You should reach for the book. Verse 73. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Well, that's some good advice there, too. I mean, if you go, if you have a car and the thing breaks, who would be the best person to take that car to? The one that designed it and built it. They would probably know how to fix it, you know. <laughs> well, why is it that most people don't want to go back to their designer and builder? God the Father. They don't want to do that. Why? Because he might tell them something that they don't want to hear. He might want to fix part of their life, you know, that they don't want fixed. Yep. Um, verse 74. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. Yeah. You know, when you fear the Lord, uh, you'll see a, a righteous man or somebody who's He's right with the Lord, and it'll be a, a great thing. that You'll be happy about that. You'll be glad, as the text says there. Verse 75, I know, o, Lo o Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be, my, be for my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Again, you're going to get that as a Christian. I see that a lot in the comments. People say, man, my whole family's turned against me, and this person's turned against me, and whatever else. Um, they're proud. They don't want to accept the truth that you've found, that the Lord showed you. And uh, they will deal perversely with you without a cause. Yep, they definitely will. Verse 79, Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I, may, or that I be not ashamed. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Again, very important. Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, Yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them and persecute me? Uh, it's going to seem like that sometimes too, by the way, when you know, you're know you living and you're doing right and whatever else, and you're going to see a lot of times it seems like the wicked get away with so much. And it's just like, you know, when are, when are you going to judge them and you know get me away from them, <laughs> essentially? It'll come in God's timing. Um, verse 85. The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. Yeah. 
They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. No matter how bad it gets, you stick with the book. In other words. Verse 88. Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Yep. 89. Forever, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. Funny, because what did Jesus Christ say? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And I still see people trying to defend this whole Mandela effect, you know, and all the stuff that the Bible's being changed and whatever. I'm just going, huh? You know? And again, this verse, you know, verse 89 there, one, Psalm 119, 89, is used by some of the uh, wicked brethren out there. And they'll, they'll use that to say, well, God's word is settled in heaven. He knows what his word is, perfect word is in heaven, but we don't have it here. You know, that's brilliant. You know, it's like God has to have a copy of it up there because he'd forget what he wrote down or something like this. You know, and we're left without anything down here. And yet we're going to be judged by the book. It makes a lot of sense. Verse 91. They continue this day according to thine ordinances, for all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have walked, or excuse me, the wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but they, thy commandment is exceeding broad. Verse 97, another one that's very important. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Yeah. Again, when you read things that are really amazing and stuff, it can cheer you up and you can think about that all day long and think about it. It's a really, really neat thing to do. Apologize, I'm a little bit tired right now. I've been uh, putting in a lot of hours. Yeah, as usual. And uh, sitting down, I, get, I usually end up just getting a little tired. So <laughs> stick with me here. Uh, verse 98. Um, thou, thou through thy commandments hast made me wise, wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's the truth right there. Your enemies are always going to be with you. It's going to be another wonderful thing about the rapture. Not only do we get to be with the Lord, we get to be with each other, but we're going to be saying bye-bye to all of our enemies and uh, to sin, temptation to sin is going to be gone. It's going to be a pretty good time. Verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Uh, you should eventually outgrow any teacher of the Bible, including including me. You should get to a point where you have a very strong personal relationship and the Lord's showing you things through His Word. Uh, your desire should be as a Christian to continually grow. Not to get to a you know little nice place where it's comfortable and then just kind of plateau there for the rest of your Christian walk. Plateau means you don't go up or down. For if you don't know. Verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Yeah. Verse 102. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my mouth, or my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Do you feel that way about this book? Or are there some things that you read about and you go, well, you know, yeah. you just kind of try to ignore those certain parts. God's word should be sweet to you. 104, 119, 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Hate? Is hate the right word? Yes, it is. And it's through God's word, his precepts, the, the different, you know, you could almost say kind of like a, the, the modern word concept, the concept of this or that, you know, the precepts that are written there, uh, the ideas that God puts in his word, 
we're supposed to get understanding from those things and through that you're going to hate every false way. I mean just make it a simple thing. Um, if you take lots of vitamin C you're not going to get some of the cold viruses and bacteria and things like that. Why don't you want that? Well you should hate those things. You should hate getting sick. So you should get understanding, get healthy so to speak through eating the right kind of nutrition. Kind of a little way to look at that. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yeah, this book will light your way in a dark world. It's a shame Amy Grant didn't figure that one out. can sing a song about verse 105, but uh, has compromised and gone over to the world and has been part of some very, very wicked things and wicked movements. Uh, you can check out av1611.org for more on that. If you're curious, uh, Terry Watkins, I think it is, Dial the Truth Ministries. Check that out. Psalm 119, 106. I have sworn and I will perform um, and perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth. It doesn't say of his wallet. O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. You know one of the offerings to the Lord that the Lord will take and he'll respect is you speaking up for him? Yeah, he will. Um, verse 109. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. You'll see that again. You know, lost people will lay snares for you. They'll try to trip you up. They'll try to get you to watch a bad movie or get you to look at a bad magazine or get you to do this or get you to do that. They try to, they try to ensnare you. Be very careful about that. And see, if you stick by God's Word, you, you keep His precepts and you're not going to err and fall into those snares of the wicked. Uh, Psalm 111. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined mine ear or mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Also very good. Here's another good one coming up that you want to highlight. Look at Psalm 119, verse 113. I hate vain faults, but thy law do I love. Interesting, because in the New Testament we read that we're to bring every thought into captivity, captivity to the obedience of Christ. Vain thoughts, letting your mind just wander around aimlessly and stuff like this. You should be thinking about the Lord. When you're not doing some task where you're working or whatever else, trying to keep your mind focused on what you're, the task at hand, when you're just having some idle time, some downtime, you need to think about God's Word. You need to meditate on Scripture. And again, how can you do that if you're not reading His Word on a daily basis? Very important. You start putting this book down, your life is going to fall apart very quickly. You'll notice that. Verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. As times get rougher and rougher, our hope is in this book. Our final authority. Verse 115. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Yeah. Well, what if they come and force us to give up our Bibles? No. I'm going to keep my Bible. And the evildoers are going to have to depart. Go away. Verse 116. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. You say, what is dross? Well, if you ever look at a picture of a smelting furnace or whatever, well, they'll take metal and they'll stick, they'll stick metal in. Well, some of that metal might have some paint on it. might have some grease or oil or whatever else. And what will happen is the impurities within the metal will rise to the surface. And then they take a little thing in there and they scoop it off. You, know, you can imagine the, the, 
the um, I can't think of the name of the the little uh, thing that they stick down in there. I don't remember, but, but the the uh, <laughs> wish I could think about this. I used to actually do this a little bit. The um, the pot or whatever that they would put the the metal into, and then they heat that thing up. This junk will come up to the top, and they take a little scoop, and they'll scoop that dross off of there, and they throw that out. You don't want any of that dross on top of that molten metal. So in the container that I can't think of the name of. <laughs> um, verse 120. My soul trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But when you fear what God can do to this nation, you're going to repent of things and whatever. You're going to stay away from sins because you fear God. And you want to hold back that judgment that comes upon a nation when they reject God. Remember, God would have spared Sodom and Gomorrah if he could have found more than ten righteous men. We're still going because there are more than ten righteous men here in this country. Psalm 121. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Again, how do you fight the evil people coming after you? Judge yourself. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we're chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I think it is, talks about that. Or maybe is it... Let me look here quickly. But you're going to see that thing. When you judge yourself, Satan doesn't have a, a foothold, so to speak, into your life. That's a good way to fight the, the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 11... Um, verse 31 and 32 is what I just quoted there about judging yourself. So keep that in mind. Psalm 121, I have done judgment and justice. Oh no, we already did, did read that one. 122, excuse me. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. That's kind of a true statement, very, very true statement for a Jew today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Um, their eyes fail for thy salvation. They're looking and looking and looking for it. I wonder where it is. I wonder where it is. It was, you know, already here. Jesus Christ brought it. 124. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Here again you see what true riches are. It's God's word. Um, verse 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I am indifferent towards every false way. No, actually it says I hate every false way. When you have such a love for truth... It requires that you have a hatred for error, every false way. I mean, how can you say that I love truth but also love error? It doesn't line up. Okay, uh, you don't have to be into this politically correct thing of being tolerant towards everything out there. Uh, if you um, love and hate some, or okay, I'll say it this way. If, if you love two things that are totally in opposition to each other, uh, that's a problem. You're a hypocrite. Or you have some very serious problems. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to love truth and hate every false way. That's a Christian. That's very important. Verse 129. Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. There's another good one. Oh, you're just an uneducated hillbilly preacher. Well, thank you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I got I got brethren out there that are some of the lowliest brethren you'd want to meet. You know, lowly people, low man on the totem pole. Totem pole, they say. You get people that are way down at the bottom of the corporate ladder. You know, way down there, and yet uh, giveth understanding unto the simple. You have more understanding if you're saved. 
in a garbage truck, guy that puts trash in the garbage trucks, or if I have a dear brother that uh, has a great deal of understanding and he mows lawns, you know, he's not a high up guy in the corporate world or anything by any means, and yet he understands the book. Great understanding. Interesting, you know, and he's going to end up in heaven someday and a bunch of rich Hollywood actors that had mansions with 23 bathrooms or something in them, something stupid like that. They're going to be burning in hell for all of eternity. Who had more understanding? Kind of like the rich man in Lazarus. Uh, verse 131, I opened my mouth and panted for I longed for thy commandments. Yeah. Verse 132, Look thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Boy, to have God's mercy, it's very important. 133 says, Order my steps in thy word, and let, me, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Thou therefore, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, endure hardness, for nor hardness is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Second Timothy chapter two verses three through four. Talk about that. Order my steps in thy word. That's an order, soldier. Don't touch that. Go over there. Do this. That should be our desire as Christians. To be a good soldier of Jesus Christ where our commanding officer, the captain of our salvation, actually talks about in the book of Hebrews. Jesus Christ says, that's a direct order, soldier. You don't say, well, sir, but I, I just think that, yes, sir. The Lord says, read the book. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, uh, come over here. I want you to pray for a little while about this. Yes, sir. Order my steps. Important. Verse uh, 134. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Uh, the Bible talks about that we're to pray for those in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. In the New Testament. You'd be amazed how much the New Testament lines up with the Old Testament. It's really kind of amazing. Verse 135, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Do you ever weep for this country? Do you ever just look at things and just say, God, I'm so sorry for this country. It's just so terrible. Yeah. Verse 137, Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. <laughs> Again, can you relate to that one? The zeal that you have for this book, it's consuming you. Why? Because your enemies don't care about the book. You're so passionate, you're going, wow, it's just so amazing. I mean, it's, it's always baffled me. How the lost world cannot see that we are in the end times. They can't see the impending, just everything falling apart in society, in the world, and war, and death, and just famine. And I mean, it's going to be so horrible in the time of Jacob's trouble. And I'm just like, wow, look at this. Whoa, you know, man. I go to these stores, you know, and they got the self checkout lines, and they got biometric finger scanners, and they got cameras everywhere, CCTV stuff. And I'm just going like, like, doesn't anybody else see this? And you get music playing over loudspeakers and it's talking about we're all one world, we're coming together and stuff like this. And I'm just going like, <laughs> walk through the grocery store and it's a new age drink section. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. And yet they don't see it. Why? They've forgotten his words. You know, and that's another weird thing I just want to say here quickly too. And that is, you know, it used to be that people even lost people had an understanding of Jesus and he died on the cross and whatever else. Now I'm seeing a whole generation of people coming up that don't even know Bible, simple, basic Bible stories. They're so brainwashed by television and movies and things. Wow. 
uh, verse 140, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. You can trust the book. It's very pure. Verse 141, I am small and despised, yet do not I for forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth, the truth. Hmm. Not thy law is truth for those who wish to accept it, and we all have our own truth. And Nope, it is the truth. And yes, it is. Verse 143, Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. Again, it lines up so much with this current world and the current system that we're going through and everything else. There's just trouble and anguish and things. And they'll take hold of you sometimes. They'll just you just get so stressed out and whatever. And uh, but you always have to go back to the book. This is where your comfort comes from. It's important to remember that. Verse one forty four: The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. Have a real life, in other words. Uh, verse one forty five: I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, Save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried, I hoped in thy word. In other words, he's saying he prevented the, the dawning of the morning. He's saying he was up all night. Uh, verse 148. Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Again, Staying up, praying, meditating on what you read in the Word of God. Verse 149. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgment. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Mm -hmm. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. Again, God's Word is truth. You don't have to worry about, well, you know, maybe that part not there. Or whatever. His book is truth. And somebody brings up some kind of question, well, what about this or what about that? And you go, well, I don't know. Well, does the book say it's truth? This whole book here? Yes. Then you can trust it. You'll say, well, but I can't understand that one thing. I can't explain the. Don't worry about it. God's book is truth. Again, if they're saying to you, there's an error in here or whatever else. Okay, what do you replace it with? If you're a professing Christian, what do you replace the King James Bible with? You can't replace it with anything perfect. Then you're away from the Lord. Everything that's come out objection-wise against this book has been answered. They've been doing this thing for over 400 years now. They just come out with attack after attack after attack after attack. <laughs> They keep, well, you know, they're going to keep doing that and everything else. Don't worry about it. Just believe in the book. Verse 141. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. We read that one. 152. Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Sorry, Mandela effect. Doesn't work. All that, you know, they've, they've rewritten the Bible stuff. I saw one of you commented, and, and there was a woman, she commented, she said, anybody that says that the Mandela Effect has changed the King James Bible is, is, is admitting that the devil and his people are more powerful than God. God says, I'm going to keep it. It's perfect. It's preserved forever. The devil comes in and says, no, actually, we changed it. <laughs> so anybody that believes in the Mandela Effect, really, in reality, is believing the devil. Might as well worship him too. Psalm 119, verse 153. Consider mine affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Be made alive there. Quicken me. Verse 155. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Oh, another good one. Another good one to write down that one. To highlight that one. Salvation is far from the wicked. Why? Because God hates them and they're non-elect and, and He hasn't chosen them from, for salvation from before the foundation of the world. No, 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 no. Salvation is far from the wicked. Why? For they seek not thy statutes. Again, 
Oh, salvation is just simply a belief, just a, a, a prayer, or you don't even have to pray according to some of the losers out there. They say it's salvation is just belief. Uh, no, salvation is an understanding that you are sinning and that you need help with that sin and you can't save yourself, so you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ and then God, help me. Help me to get away from these sins. That's what salvation is, true biblical salvation. And you see it right there. You know, salvation is far from the wicked because they seek not his statutes, God's statutes, God's laws, God's rules. So what happens when one of those wicked people finally turns and says, hey, I want to find God? They're no longer there uh, trying to stay away from his statutes. They don't want to be wicked anymore because they understand the wicked lifestyle that they've lived is hurting them. They want to change. So they run, instead of running away from God, they run to God. So important. Psalm 156. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies. Hello? <laughs> Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. Yep. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Amen. You know, talk about a good one there. I mean, you can, you know, behold the transgressors here on YouTube. You know, you can look at the comments and things and you look and you just go, uh, it's grieving. Uh, verse 159, consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth until CERN changes. Uh, oh, no. Until the Mandela effect. No, it says, uh, every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Nobody's changing the King James Bible. Give me a break. Verse 161. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. But my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I know Gail Replinger wrote a book about that, in awe of thy word. Do you stand in awe of this book? But well, it's something to think about. 162. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. More to be desired than gold and silver. What would it be like if you were walking out through the woods someplace or walking someplace and along the beach and there's this box washed up, this old wooden crate looking thing and you walk over and you you know, pry one of the, the, the lid open or something and it flops open and it's filled with gold coins. Big, huge silver cup. Would you rejoice? Sure, absolutely. What do you think of this book? What do you think of this book, this King James Bible? Is it great spoil to you? Do you look at this thing and say, wow, I am so rich because I have this book? Should be. Verse 163, here's this terrible judgmental word again. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Notice the contrast. Lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. You're going to see that in the Bible too. Lying is not the same thing as truth. Satan is the father of lies. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You say, oh, I'm a Jew. I reject the New Testament. Well, that's a bad thing for you. You're going to go into that time of Jacob's trouble and be corrected until you see who the real Messiah is and was. Jesus Christ, in other words. Verse 164, we're getting there. Here it says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Again, praise coming as a result of God's judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That's another one I have highlighted here in my Bible. You will have peace when you have this book as your final authority. That doesn't mean that you're not going to get upset. You know, obviously Jesus got upset at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. It didn't mean that he was not offended or something like this. 
he was offended at what they were doing and what they were speaking and things, but it wasn't because of of that they were right somehow or whatever else, and he was under conviction because they were right and he knew he was wrong. Or No, no. Uh, the Lord had peace through that time period there. He could say, hey, you know, what they're saying about me is not true. When they attack me, when they slander me, when they put me down, I know I'm in line with Scripture, so I have peace. Yes, it makes me angry at those people, and I'd like to go over and just, you know, <laughs> hit them sometimes. But I have peace knowing I'm right with God. Does that make sense? Verse 166. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. There's nothing that you can do in secret, by the way, before the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 169. Let me cry, come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word doesn't say give me understanding according to the academia of the day or according to whatever the Ivy League system or you know, colleges and universities and things. No, according to thy word. I want understanding according to the book. It's the filter for truth. Verse 170. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Yeah. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. What an amazing psalm. Just incredible. So many of the things in there that line up with your life as a Christian. Um, don't forget about the book. You know, I, I've said this thing so many times. I, I know some of you out there are just like, we know, we know, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to say it one more time. Here's the authority. God's book. Not me. Not you. Not your pastor, not your husband, not your wife, not your father, not your mother, not your brother, not your sister. The Word of God. If you keep this book in a prominent place in your life and you live by this book, you live by the Word, you won't fail. All right? You'll be attacked. You're going to have problems. You're going to have, you know people, whatever, saying nasty things about you, lying about you, whatever else. But you won't fail the Lord. But when you start to put this book down and you stop living according to this word, you're going to fall. You're going to be chasing the Lord. God's word is the most important physical possession that you have in this life, Christian. Make sure that you live by it. 